today's apologist claim, God rewards faithful Christians. Most Christians take it as axiomatic that God rewards their faith, both in this life and the next. Unfortunately, since there is no credible evidence for an afterlife, there is no way to know if Christians receive any rewards after they die. However, it is possible to see if they reap the benefits of their faith during their lives by comparing their outcomes with non-Christians. First, though, one must ask how those divine rewards would manifest. Presumably, it would include increased happiness and life satisfaction, strong relationships, mental and physical health, and perhaps even financial success. That last one is probably the easiest, most objective reward to measure, and it is in fact one of the central claims of the so-called prosperity gospel. This belief, largely practiced by some Protestants and embraced by three of the four largest congregations in 2006, teaches that God wants his followers to prosper. And if they demonstrate faith, positive thoughts, and confession, and donate generously, he will reward them with health and financial success. Many other Christians disagree, but believers support their claims with various biblical passages, most especially Malachi 3.10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So are followers of the prosperity gospel financially better off than other groups? Well, according to Pew Research, out of 25 U.S. religious affiliation categories, those with the top five highest incomes are Jews, Hindus, Episcopalians, Presbyterians, and Atheists. Clearly, Jews, Hindus, and Atheists are not Christians. Episcopalians and Presbyterians are mainline Protestants, but they largely consider the prosperity gospel to be heresy. That's not surprising, considering that the Bible repeatedly tells Christians to give all their wealth away to the poor. Mark 10, 21-25 Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor. How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Luke 26, 29-30 Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Luke 12, 33, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Luke 14, 33, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Okay, so clearly the wealth part of the prosperity gospel isn't one of the rewards. So then what about the reward of increased health? Well, that's a little more complicated. Highly religious people may indeed have healthier outcomes than less devoted believers and non-believers, but the thing is, it doesn't make any difference which religion you follow. Extreme devotion to any god gives the same results. That implies it's one's level of fanaticism that matters, not whether you believe in the Christian god. Furthermore, the most religious U.S. states and countries around the world are also the least healthy, while the most secular U.S. states and countries are the most healthy. In addition, a multi-million dollar study in 2006 tested the effectiveness of prayer on recovery of over 1,800 patients following heart surgery. The results showed that prayer offered no improvement over no prayer at all. In fact, those patients who knew they were being prayed for actually suffered a 7% greater chance of complications. So evidently there are no real health benefits for being a faithful Christian either. So what about the reward of strong relationships? Well, humans are social creatures, and being part of a congregation brings with it social connections and thus social benefits. That's a good thing, although one receives the same benefits by being part of almost any social group, including groups from other religions or even no religion at all. So no advantage there either. But surely marriages sanctified by God should have a better chance of succeeding, right? Well, no. Christians divorce at roughly the same rate as non-believers. The results are similarly mixed when it comes to happiness and life satisfaction. While the differences are small, Protestants rate themselves slightly higher for happiness than do Buddhists, other religions, Catholics, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, the non-religious, and lastly, Orthodox Christians. And for life satisfaction, the order is Catholics, Protestants, other religions, 
Buddhists, Jews, the non-religious, Hindus, Muslims, and Orthodox Christians last again. Unfortunately, those rankings may be further muddled by relative wealth, social connections, freedom, persecution, etc. So again, there doesn't appear to be much of a reward for Christians as far as happiness and life satisfaction are concerned either. So if faith in the Christian God doesn't bring increased happiness and life satisfaction, strong relationships, mental and physical health, or financial rewards, then what real-world benefits does it actually provide? Why, it's almost as if there isn't any God at all, isn't it?